Hi there, my name is Madison Smith and I'm a Fire Information Officer with the Caribou Fire Centre. We're joined here today by Matt Lees, who is the Wildfire Prevention Officer at the Caribou Fire Centre. But in the summer months, he serves as an Incident Commander on fires around the Caribou. Hello, thanks for having me. So Matt, this year there's been a lot of conversations about planned ignitions and what they are and what they do. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about them. Yeah, so planned ignitions are a tactic we use on wildfires where um, we bring our, the fire's edge to our containment lines. So if we're not able to bring our containment lines right tight to the fire, um, it's br we're able to use uh, planned ignitions to bring the fire to a workable area. Um, there also, you may also hear the terms of, like backfiring, backburning, um, and a couple other terms like that, but planned ignitions is basically the ter technical term we use when, within BC Wildfire. And why is this operation or tactic uh, useful? Uh, there's a number of reasons why it's useful. Um, one, we get to control some of the inputs when we're doing the plant ignitions. So for example, uh, the temperature, the relative humidity, as well as the wind inputs, uh, we can do a, we can conduct a burn when those uh, conditions are correct and give us um, a high potential of success. Compared to if a wildfire is just burning towards our containment line, we can't control those inputs. So if it's a if it's a windy day and it comes quickly to our containment line, um, there's not much we can do in that uh, situation. The other reason why it's useful is uh, in an area where we can't go direct attack, like I said, putting our containment line close to the fire, um, it can bring the fire to an area where we can actually work it with our crews. Now that we know the benefits, can you tell us a little bit about the planning process? Yes, I can. Uh, so when it comes to the planning, there's a, there is a lot of thought that goes into this process. Um, a lot of it ba is based around the safety aspect of things. So when it comes to our own uh, crews as well as the general public, um, that all has to be in place. Everyone needs to know uh, what the plan is in the areas that we're going to be burning. So if it's an area where there's people, uh, we make sure that they're out of that area. Um, planning when it comes to our tactics on the ground. So making sure our containment lines are in place, making sure our hose lays are in place, uh, making sure um, that all of our water delivery systems are working as well as, uh, like I had mentioned, the weather, making sure uh, we are planning for the appropriate window, as well as the weather coming in after our planned ignition uh, to make sure that um, everything aligns for us to have a successful burn. Are all of these planned ignitions the same scale? Uh, no, we break it down into two different types of scales, so large scale versus small scale. Large scale could t uh, tends to be uh, aerial ignition with the helicopters, uh, which uh, can be uh, either heli torch or uh, plastic fear dispenser, which is these little balls that drop out of the helicopter and uh, start point ignition along your containment line. Uh, these two tactics are used on uh, on a larger area of unoperable ground. So say a slope side where we can't get our crews closer to the fire and we need to bring the fire off that unoperable ground to an area where our, where our crews can work. Um, and it's just un we're unable to get crews in there to do the burning. The small scale would be more hand ignition and we would use our crews on our containment lines to mainly clean up small pockets of fuel that are unburnt along our containment line. Um, and these two can work together so we could do a large scale with a helicopter and use um, a smaller scale hand ignition along our containment line and use them together to have a successful burn. Thanks for explaining the different scales of these operations to us a little bit more, but now can you talk about the resourcing that's in place when these operations take place? For sure. Yeah, it depends heavily on uh, the scale of burn that we are conducting. Um, but outside our containment lines and our hose lays that we have in place, we, we may have uh, heavy equipment on site. Uh, we may have water trucks. We also may have uh, um, helicopters uh, with bucket support in place as well. Um, so we, on every burn, we... Uh, and part of the planning process, so we make sure that we think about what resources we would need in place uh, on this burn and uh, and where they should be located. So it sounds like there's a lot that goes into the planning process of these planned ignitions. Is there any type of contingency plans that go into place? For sure. Yeah, this is a big portion of uh, our planning uh, on uh, this type of tactic. So uh, for us, we always make sure that we always have another containment line in place for if something does go wrong on the burn. This could be a natural barrier or this could be another containment line that's in place. What this allows us to do is, uh, while conducting the planned ignition on our planned area, um, if something pops or spills over, that we can take a tactical pause and step back and reassess the situation at that point. All right, well, thank you for taking time today, Matt, to explain planned ignitions to us. It sounds like 
there's a lot that goes into them and uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you for having me.